It's the Sun Ultra One Workstation. We got 20 minute videos on old technology, computers, laser discs, and some CDs. We got two little dogs licking their balls on the screen. And now it's time for the show. So, um, maybe about a month or two ago, I did a video on a Sun uh, workstation, the Ultra 10 from the late 90s. Now, I made it clear in that video, I have to make it clear again, uh, this channel, and with retro computing and everything really, is really focused around like a gamer-centric point of view. I, I like to play old games on these retro computers and consoles and... TVs and monitors and whatnot. So workstations really aren't my thing. Uh, they're oriented towards well, like work and graphic design and things that are kind of interesting, but like personally, I don't really care about. Uh, but a lot of times, I have machines like this just kind of given to me, or just they just kind of fall in my lap, and they're still interesting. I still find them interesting. Um, so I like to do videos and write-ups on them and stuff, but they're not really my thing now. This machine here actually isn't mine. It's actually on loan from a friend of mine. Now, I know this machine doesn't work. Uh, he was never able to get it working. Uh, so I don't, I probably won't be able to either because again, I don't really have much experience with these workstations, but he's like, hey, you want to do a video on this machine? Not a ton of information out there. Might be a cool video. And uh, I figured, sure, I, there was some interest when I did the um, Sun Ultra 10 uh, video a while back, so. Uh, we'll take a look at the Ultra One. Now, the Ultra One came out in 95, I believe, and it was the first in the uh, Ultra series. So, as I said, these are workstations, uh, you know, graphic design work, basically, things like that. Not really game-oriented. I believe they can run Linux, uh, but they had their own operating system. A lot of proprietary parts, especially in this compared to the Ultra 10. A lot of proprietary stuff. And so, yeah, you can't really play... You, there's a couple ports for a couple games. Um, I do plan to pull that Sun 10 back out that I have, the Ultra 10. And uh, my video on that, someone left me some helpful links. So I might try some game ports on that. But these are really uh, not machines you should look at uh, when you want to look at gaming. <sighs> some modesty, buddy. When you want to look at gaming. So, um... All right, so the first interesting thing you might think about this is, well, where the heck are the drives? And I thought this was really interesting about this machine. Um, you've got the Sun logo, you've got a Power LED Ultra One, you've got this thing, you think maybe this folds down and there's a, like a floppy drive and a five and a quarter inch drive there, and it's, it's, not, it's not the case. This is just kind of like a bezel. Um, <laughs> is it there? No, no. Uh, maybe it's on this side. Yeah, it's actually on the side. So we have a five and a quarter inch bay, usually occupied by a CD-ROM drive, uh, but you could put something like a tape drive or something there too. And then we have a floppy drive. This is just a standard 1.44 megabyte floppy drive, as far as I can tell. Um, I actually haven't tested either of these. And um, this is like cut out in the case here, so pretty much... You're only uh, putting a floppy drive in there. Zip drive, eh, may work. I doubt it. Um, this is really for a floppy drive. So, yeah, it's really interesting that you have the drives on the side. I, I don't really, I'm not 100% sure what the point. Uh, maybe in these kind of setups they weren't used very often, so they just wanted a plane. I, I don't know, it's kind of weird. Uh, it doesn't really affect anything except... Maybe if these were in a situation where these were in a cage or a desk and you've got some things on the side like speakers or something, that could be really inconvenient. Um, so I, I just, I really don't know what the point of putting them on the side is. It's set to be different, I guess. Uh, but it's, it's just, it's weird. So let's take a look at the back. Alright, so here's the back of this machine. And I'll just zoom in a little bit and we'll go over these. Uh, standard, here's a power switch. It's not actually, see it flips back to a neutral position. Um, usually it's either on or off. But this one's kind of like in the middle. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so right here we have a male and female with the standard three prong. So you could run uh, power into this and then you have a monitor. I, I always kind of like these setups. I don't use them very often. But it is convenient because then you only have one plug going into the wall. 
and if you have a monitor you can like plug it in here and then when you power this on it gives power to the monitor I always like seeing that but you don't see that all the time so moving over uh, we have right now this is a empty this can be an empty slot there's no built-in video for this so right now we have the video card here and it uses that weird forget what it's called like W3 or something um, video it's not really it's just a proprietary connection I don't really think it is any different than like VGA it just outputs like standard VGA as far as I know and you can even use adapters like this that just <laughs> so you can just use a standard VGA monitor. Um, I don't know. Again, proprietary for the sake of being proprietary, maybe. Um, if there's some kind of benefit to using this weirdo uh, connector, just let me know in the comments. Uh, so right here, I believe this is a parallel port. And here is our port for the keyboard. I'll show you the keyboard in a minute. Uh, it looks like PS2, but I don't think it is PS2. Uh, so, or, you know... Uh, Apple desktop bus or yeah I think that's how it's. ADB kinda looks like that uh, I can't recall off the top of my head if that's so if it's like a proprietary connection or not uh, so next to that we have this port here this right here this is an AUI port or attachment unit interface and it's just something between uh, I believe your uh, Ethernet card and the Ethernet jack or something like that again it's something to do with networking I have no idea what the point of it is uh, maybe someone can tell me in the comments uh, I was always very weak when it comes to networking I, I never really did much networking even modern systems I don't really network my computers or anything like that so yeah I'm, I'm a little bit weak uh, when it comes to that part of things especially with vintage hardware so uh, right here is a I believe this is TPE port. It just kind of looks like an Ethernet port to me or a modem jack. Uh, so maybe that's just the fancy name of saying a modem jack or an Ethernet jack or something. Uh, if you know, just let me know in the comments. Uh, above that we have two serial ports, uh, A and B. Uh, over here we have, oh, let me zoom out a little bit for you guys. Over here we have two more. These have blanks in them right now, but these are expansion ports. So you have three expansion ports total. And down here we have SCSI, and then we have some audio jacks. So there are, is built-in audio. So for the audio jacks, we have a headphone jack, we have line in and out, and then we have a microphone jack. So let's open this thing up and just poke around inside a little bit. And then uh, we'll fire it up, but I don't think I'm going to be able to get it working because uh, he couldn't either. So here's the two keyboards. Now this one here is the one that he gave me with the Sun Ultra 1. And this is the keyboard I have with the Sun Ultra 10. Now I don't know if these are original keyboards to what machines they go with. I don't know. Um, but there is a little bit different. Here's the, the later Sun Ultra 10, I would assume, keyboard. It has some lights up here, but it mostly looks the same. And here's the one that he gave me with the Sun Ultra 1. Um, Pretty much, almost kind of looks standard. It has these keys here. Uh, oh, some of them are I've open. Some of these keys are like that stuck down a bit. This open key is on incorrectly, and this one's missing. Um, <laughs> so, but this one's a little heavier too. It feels this one feels a little bit more like solid than this one. Um, but yeah, okay. So let's uh, look at the machine, the inside of it. So I think this machine's missing a few screws with the case, so I only had to remove two screws. But the screws are, uh, they have like little springs on them for tension. Uh, don't really see the point of that, uh, where a regular screw would work just fine just to hold a case lid on. But yep, that, that's another little interesting thing. Okay, so here is the inside of our machine. Uh, we've got, here's our CD drive. Uh, I believe there is, looks like two hard drives here. These are SCSI drives, and there's a, I believe this is the ribbon connector to them, uh, which is SCSI. Uh, I believe these are, looking up the number here, these are Seagate's 2.1 gigabytes. Sounds about right for the time. CPU here, it's under this weird little plastic shroud. We'll have to take that out and take a closer look at it in a moment. Um, here's our RAM. These are really tall uh, RAM sticks. I don't think they're proprietary I mean I think they're like ECC RAM but I don't think the socket here is like weird or different or anything um, they do have these little handle things on them <laughs> so um, yeah 
Anyways, yeah, these are really big RAM sticks. I'm not sure what's in there right now, but I believe the max this can take is 128 megabytes, was, which was quite a lot for 19, uh, 1995. So these connections, these are for the expansion cards that you would that would face outward here where those blanks are. And this is called S-Bus. There's two here, and then there's one over here. Although I believe some versions of this, the uh, Sun Ultra ones, only came with two. This one has three. Uh, the CPU speed is from, I believe the base model was 143 megahertz, and they had, I think, 163, and then 200 megahertz were the uh, CPUs that came in the Sun Ultra 1. Uh, I don't know which one this is, uh, but I believe it is a 143 uh, megahertz. Um, again, motherboard, a lot of proprietary chips. I have no clue what they do. There is a crystal chip here, which I'm assuming is for sound. Uh, this is a CS4231A, I guess. Um, right here is the video card currently installed in it. A little weird, I've seen this BT chip before, especially on Mac cards. LSI, though, I think they do, like, SCSI cards? I, I've never seen a video card from them before, so that's interesting. I don't know the specs on this, but something my friend, uh, when he uh, gave this to me to do a video on it, he, th he thought this was really interesting, uh, but there's names on this card here. So there's names on this card. I don't know. I'm guessing it's engineers that designed this card or something. And then you have two here that are crossed out. So we've got two names here that are crossed out, and he thought that was uh, really interesting. I can't quite read it. Looks like one is like Chris M, and I don't know the other one. I don't, I don't know, maybe there was some kind of falling out <laughs> on the design team for this card. I don't know, my friend thought that was really interesting why there are two names crossed out, and he really wanted to know the story behind that. So, hey, if anyone uh, knows, please let us know in the comments. And that's about it. Like I said, this, this isn't my forte, so I'm not going to go in-depth on this, because I don't really know uh, much about this board or what's going on with this board. So, just consider this video sort of like a casual uh, overview. Alright, so here's the motherboard with that little shroud removed. Um, there's four screws uh, holding where the fan is. And also with the uh, video card taken off, there's where it connected right there. We've got the same kind of connection uh, over here, probably for a secondary video card. Um, now, immediately I noticed that two of these were basically... Uh, loose, they popped right off. These look like little heat sinks, and these are on pretty good. I can move them, but these ones just popped right off. Uh, looks like maybe cache chips or RAM chips uh, with these big old heat sinks on them. Now, one heat sink seems to be completely missing in action, so um, it was just not there. It wasn't rattling in the case. I've tried to move the case around and look in little crevices. And uh, we're completely missing a heat sink, so um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, maybe I'll just uh, slap on a little, a little smaller like RAM chip heat sink or something. So there's something on them. Obviously, these chips apparently need some kind of heat sink on them, so they must get hot. So uh, I don't like the idea of running it and missing one of these. I just I don't know what happened to it or how it could have just vanished, <laughs> but. Yeah, I cannot find the heat sink. So, um, so here is the. I'm not going to take the heat sink off the CPU, but there it is, right there, under there. Uh, this is the fan, and uh, you can see these are these are very long screws that go down through that fan and uh, into these four holes right here. And yeah, so I'm going to put these little heat sinks back on. And try to find something I can put on the final chip that is missing one for whatever reason. At some point, uh, it must have fallen loose, and um, I, maybe the previous owner was like, "What's this rattling around in my case? I, I don't know where it goes. I'll just throw it out." <laughs> so, um, yeah. So we'll find something. All right. So let's see if this thing uh, even posts. I haven't actually tried it out yet. Um, he didn't either, so at least I don't think he did, but I do have one of these handy-dandy uh, adapters, so we'll just hook it up to the old uh, Trinitron, and let's see if it does anything. 
Okay, so unfortunately, uh, well, it powered up. Uh, it's running. Uh, it, it made a lot of sounds. I heard the hard drive. Uh, it sounded like it was counting up RAM, but uh, I'm not getting uh, a video signal. Um, now, I know some of these are really weird. Like, if you don't hook them up the right way, they act as like terminals and, and things like that. Um, so I'm going to have to do some more researching and poking. Maybe it's just not connected right or something isn't right with the the video um, so I'm going to go check that out and then I guess I'll get back to you guys but I mean it it sounds good the lights everything sounds okay uh, but I'm just not getting a video signal and, uh, just for the heck of it I tried swapping the video card from here to over here which is kinda neat this these kinda flip up they look like little claws and then you uh, you put in the video card. You're supposed to snap those into place, but I'm just kind of letting it go for now. And, and uh, yeah, still uh, no video. Uh, not sure what's going on here. And, yeah, short video. I mean, for my channel, yeah, it's a short video. I just don't really have much else to say about this machine. Uh, I couldn't get it running. Uh, I did try some things. I know if you hold stop and D... Uh, when you power it up, it will do a, a test, and you watch the LED lights on the keyboard. And they did blink, and then I didn't get anything after that. So, I don't know. Either it's just the video, there's some problem with the video output, uh, or it could be something wrong with this adapter, maybe? I tried multiple monitors, but maybe there's something wrong with the adapter. Maybe there's something wrong with the video card. Uh, I don't know. Or maybe the system board, there's something wrong with it. So... Uh, I don't know. Uh, by the time this video comes out, this will probably be back with my friend, but if you have any ideas, put them in the comments and I will let him know, and uh, maybe he can mess around with it. Other than that, I really don't have much to say about it. Interesting machine, uh, interesting design, but workstations, again, just aren't my thing. But there aren't a lot of videos on YouTube on this particular uh, Sun Ultra 1, and the ones there are are kind of old. So I know I didn't add much to the conversation out there about this machine, but I hope maybe I added something for someone that's interested in these kind of Sun workstations. So uh, thanks again. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe, hit the like button, uh, all that jazz. Uh, let me know if you'd like to, if you, if you like this workstation stuff that's not necessarily gaming related, uh, if I come across them, uh, I'll pick them up if you guys enjoy these kind of videos. But um, I'll see you all later, and thanks again for watching.